in on this conversation between Piro and My Misery and Me. And, of course, Piro's wrong. Um, they're talking about the two-slit experiment again, which really, you know, it really needs to get this resolved one of these days by physicists. They actually have to do some, um, you know, instead of spending billions on accelerators looking for bosons, uh, then maybe they should spend the millions uh, building a really, really good uh, experimental device for resolving uh, what happens in the double slit experiment. Um, first off, I mean, this whole quantum mechanics thing, again, it's that the math is not, is not, is not creating, is not uh, indicating, it's not um, proving the existence of random or um, um, spontaneous or some kind of phenomenon that uh, doesn't um, isn't suitable to particle physics, and that means particle physics, not wave physics. It's merely accepting um, the fact that when we can't detect, there's when there's things too small for us to see them, to observe them without interfering with them, because they're so small, um, you can kind of understand this, right? I mean, if I had a dust particle sitting here in front of me, there'd be no way I couldn't interfere with it, because my mass is so substantial, it's just so unsubstantial, I I'm, I'm, would not only be messing up the atmosphere just by breathing and radiating, um, you know, there's all these electrostatic effects also, and all kinds of other influences. There's no way I'm not going to affect its path, um, even though it's uh, two feet away from me. Um, oh, look at the cat already. Okay. Gee, you didn't like it out there. Cold, huh? Anyway, um, really cold. <laughs> um, you know, if you're really busy, I don't have time for this. Do a better video later. Uh, all right, and so this is in the two slit experiment. Basically, you know, Pierrot keeps saying this: the, the, there's there's some sort of real phenomenon, um, the, there's some sort of real property that indicates that um, some essence of this particle, this thing, is um, splitting, going through both of the two slit experiments. There's really the one divider experiment is really what we're talking about, uh, and the, the particle goes on both sides of the divider, um, and somehow now interferes with itself once it's past the divider, you know, in a, in a, as if tied to each of its partners, <laughs> commingled, uh, and then ends up on a target, and instead of revealing itself as a distribution of energy, which they claim it has become, yeah, it resolves itself, it chooses where it's going to impact somehow in this mechanism, even though it's, it's, mass has now been converted, its mass, its substance, uh, say it has no mass, uh, has been converted into a wave front of spike distribution, um, it's going to resolve itself in one position, and over time, all these particles as they come through are somehow going to know that, oh yeah, the first particle, well, he resolved himself left, you know, the, the far left, like there's, say, say there's ten uh, lines of delineation that are this wave interference pattern that somehow over time the particles know that oh yeah Joe particle came in before me he went to the right all the way to far left and resolved himself there with uh, the proportion of energy so um, I'm going to go here uh, you know to because he's over there I'll go here because we have to make this probabilistically uh, match up so you know the middle bars are the brightest and the, the ones to the next stage are a little less bright and the ones to the next stage are a little less bright. And so somehow these particles know this. They know how to do this math correctly, <laughs> which is, you know, preposterous. Um, and okay, so what I'm going to bring up again is lensing, which is this effect that takes place with light. Theoretically, I could stick my, my hand like this. I could make a little hole, all right? Theoretically, when I do that, you know, let me just put it this way. So there's an image on this side, um, and there I put a hole in a, in a in a device here, and then I 
observe the impact of the light on the other side, I've just created a camera. And there will be a reversed, an upside down and backwards image resolved on this other side if I do it correctly. If I have just the right amount of light and uh, the correct distances between these items, I will resolve uh, an image on the other wall upside down and reversed of the item of whatever's over here, you know, the other thing. Um, like I said, I could put my finger like this. Theoretically, just right now, I have created, in the back of my eye, a forward image. Because my eye reverses it because of the lens. But anyway, on the lens, my eye gets impacted with a reversed image. That some portion of the photons that are going from me to you, to this camera, are now being lensed and reversed. Now, you can't see it because they're being washed out by that big empty hole center. If the hole was really small, they wouldn't get washed out because it's the outside edge. It's the surface of the material creating the obstruction that is creating the effect. So what has to be understood in the two-slit experiment is the slits are creating the phenomenon. The slits are not non-players in the event. They are the event. The event doesn't happen without the slits. The slits are the creator of the effect. That's why they don't do the one impediment experiment. That's why the outside walls in the two slit experiment are necessary to creating the substance of the uh, 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 correct interference pattern, if you want to put use those words. There wouldn't be a correct interference pattern if you didn't have the outside walls. And that pretty much defines what's taking place. And this can already this is already a known effect, okay? It happens all the time in astronomical observations. I think it almost happens all the time in our own well, probably not. Uh but if you put an impediment, a, a single needle in front of a light beam, the light will go around the needle. It will be bent. Okay? Lensing is what it's called, I think in all these different circumstances, all these different varieties of lensing. And it's just the realization that light is very easily moved, bent, changed in its direction. Mirrors are examples of this. They don't get hot and burn up and do all this stuff, because, they're, but they're basically are changing fundamentally the direction of light. Um, sometimes they're creating new light, a surface, sometimes a reflection you're getting of something is the light goes in to the atomic structure of the surface and new light is being thrown out. So a green light goes in and a red light can come out, a red photon. So it isn't strictly reflecting like a, a ball bouncing on the ground. The ball isn't absorbed by the ground and the ground pops a new ball up. But in physics, that is sometimes what's taking place, is the one ball goes in, a different ball comes out. And in the two-slit experiment, what's happening is that the material that the light is passing by is distorting, is interfering with the direction of the photon and creating an image on the target. Um, yeah, I mean, each photon, and because of its own direction, just like an image form. So you can take, like, the, the, the pinhole camera is a camera, it's just a pinhole, and, uh, you know, you can take very high-resolution pictures. If you have a very small hole, you'll take very high-resolution pictures, just like you had used a lens, and it'll be upside down and reversed because the light has been bent by the edges of the material uh, the hole is made out of. The hole is in. And that's all that's ha taking place here. There's no, there's no phenomenon of interference. There's no phenomenon where a particle goes through both um, slits or on both sides of a single impediment. The particle does not go on both sides. All that's really taking place is the mechanics, the physics 
of the interference is consistent because of the consistency of the photons. And so depending on where, how far away from the slit material the photon is when it passes, it will be deflected in regular proportions. It's a lot like atoms will only create photons when certain energy levels are reached. They have to peak at certain um, energy levels before a photon can be released. So you could, so they're, they're not, they're, they're kind of digital rather than analog. You can't put a little bit of energy in and get a little bit of energy out. You have to put enough energy to get to the energy level necessary to pop out a whole thing. You can't pop out a half a photon. Um, so, um, much the, and that interference between these small particles becomes very regular and very almost digital, almost all or nothing. It will be diffracted one degree or three degrees or seven degrees. It won't be diffracted two degrees. And it's that, probably some kind of effect like that, that's creating um, what appears to be an interference pattern, which is, but is just a mathematical representation of the fact that photons and the, 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 the material substrate have digital features, have features where um, it's all or nothing, whether there's either enough energy for a full deflection or not enough energy for any deflection. Uh, and so to answer the question, there's another element of the two-slit experiment is, is when they attempt to detect which slit the thing went through, it fouls the experiment in terms of all the interference it disappears. And I think that's just a phenomenon of the fact that the detector so catastrophically influences the photon that it no longer has its regular path and it essentially goes right through the middle of the slit. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, the game's over in terms of representing the image because instead of hitting the edge of the hole in the in the, um, um, what's it called, the small hole camera, whatever you want to call it, um, it goes right through the center and creates no image. Uh, it creates no representation of its original path. Uh, no inverted and backward image, again. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's probably enough. Um, but yeah, this is, this is, this is really dangerous when, uh, you know, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing kind of thing. When, you know, people uh, make these, it was Piro, uh, make really obnoxious claims that this is the most proven science in the history of science and all this other crap. Um, it's not. It's a, a, it's a mental model that can be full of of completely catastrophic errors in terms of explicit accuracy and that um, the real truth will be something like it mathematically. It's the same kind of... Um, it, it, the, 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 what, the event can be described in other ways that will fully account for all the um, effects without creating any necessity for a particle to split in half, uh, go through two slits, and then decide, <laughs> you know, how it chooses to resolve itself on the target. No, um, photons don't decide anything, and uh, there is no um, uh, capacity for any truly random event. And the fact that the single hole camera the small hole camera creates an accurate image, not an inaccurate image, is sort of evidence of that. If that camera created a distortion, a flaw, you know, a, a defect, then you could argue uh, that there's something interfering, something else happening, uh, something random happening. But the fact that the image is correct just indicates that there's nothing um, variable. Everything, the, the, the deterministic mechanics are still in play. So anyway, 
enough. Uh, so till later. Maybe pictures. I don't know. Drawings. I don't know. I do something. Yeah. <clears throat> but just I'm just you know it really is irritating because there's an awful lot of physicists talking an awful lot of shit. And these are smart guys and they really should know they're talking way beyond their evidence. <laughs>